Welcome to today's video. In this one we'll be doing a character study on Dr. Vincent Waltz. I need to say now that there will be major spoilers in this video detailing Waltz's motives. I'm not sure why you're watching this if you haven't finished the game yet, but anyway, you have been warned. Let's get into today's video. What's a horror game without a massively overpowered mutant antagonist trying to prevent you from achieving your goals? Think Nemesis or Mr. X from Resident Evil. Anyway, not much is known about Waltz prior to the outbreak. All we can really gather at this point is that he is a doctor and a scientist who was working for the GRE, although it's not clear how long he'd been in his role for. He was married at some point prior to the pandemic, and at some point he had a daughter. So let's look at Waltz's timeline. So as we've already mentioned, Waltz worked for the GRE. It was at this point that the GRE were desperately trying to work on finding a cure for the new mutated strain of tachytransmissive Haran virus or THV for short. I guess this led them to break into different departments to conduct their research. At some point Waltz started experimenting on children. He was hoping to create a bioweapon in which the host for the virus would merge with it, retaining their cognitive senses and, essentially, not dying. Some of these test subjects were Aiden and his sister Mia. According to Aiden, they were separated at some point from their parents, they were taken in by Waltz and used as test subjects. We can see from reports on the children that many of them reacted badly to the experiments, exhibiting symptoms such as diarrhea, vomiting and fever. At some point a fire broke out in the hospital and Aiden and his sister got separated. The GRE found out about the experiments, likely due to the fire, and despite being the kings of unethical practices themselves, the GRE thought that experimenting on kids was going a little bit too far, even for them, so they fired Waltz. This was too little too late though, as at this point the virus had already spread, causing the worldwide event known as the Fall. After the Fall, Waltz ended up in Villador. He fell in with Colonel Williams's group known as the Renegades. Williams promised to help Waltz find a specific type of military key, which was used to control the fate of the city should things get out of hand. What would Williams get in return? Well, Waltz promised to experiment on members of his renegade faction, essentially giving him a band of super soldiers with enhanced aggression, speed and strength. In Williams' eyes, this would make him a feared force in the city. Let's face it, he needed it since he'd been driven out of the city after the March Massacre took place. Williams allowed Waltz to have his own quarters and Waltz set up a lab where he would experiment on the renegades. When Aiden later visits this lab, he finds some recordings by Waltz, recorded that very same year in 2036. Waltz's three journal recordings are very interesting. Back to back, the tapes state the following. Report 24, 2036, 130th day of the year. It's been six months since the funds ran out. 20 since any improvement has been seen. Patient unconscious. After administering the compound, blood pressure increased slightly. Noticeable pupil movement. The only chance for progress is to go back to X-13. If the information can be confirmed, and the GRE key has been found by Commander Lucas, there is a chance to further this research. It must succeed at all costs. Report 13, 2036, 105th day of the year. Fun's gone. An attempt to recreate the compound. Still unsuccessful. Patients react with uncontrollable aggression. Increasing psychophysical abilities. As I no longer have test subjects, I am testing the compound on myself. Report 20, 2036, 126 day of the year. An old Villador informant has reported that Commander Lucas has found it. <laughs> he has found the GRE key. This means that it is possible to enter X-13 again. I've sent a reconnaissance team under Dylan's command to the old Villador subway station. I am waiting for a report. So it seems at some point, Waltz's funding ran out. Wherever that funding was coming from, I don't know. But Waltz makes mention of the GRE key, which he reveals he needs in order to get into X-13 and further his research. Waltz starts his experiments on the Renegades, which is why a lot of them we see in the game seem to possess blackened veins and a higher strength than aggression. Eventually, Waltz ran out of subjects, so ended up testing on himself. Waltz screwed Williams over by causing the super soldiers to become loyal to him instead, and eventually he starts coordinating strategic attacks on the residents in the city. This has a double advantage. The citizens will think Williams is the source of these attacks, and the peacekeepers would attack Williams at the dam. 
If you want to see more about the foundation of the tensions between the Peacekeepers and the Renegades, see my video up there. Anyway, Commander Lucas of the Peacekeepers found a GRE key and Waltz tasked Hakon with assassinating Commander Lucas and taking the key. But we all know what happened next. A man named Dylan stole the GRE key and gave it to Aiden just before he died. And Waltz spends the majority of the game trying to track Aiden down for the key. The key itself opens a bunker named X-13. An arc built by the GRE containing rations and supplies, X-13 was also equipped with missiles as a failsafe. Basically, the moment X-13 was opened with the GRE key, a series of strategic missile strikes would be launched upon the city. There would be no way to stop it once it launched. Other cities had them too, and I guess other cities were destroyed at some point, leaving Villador as the only remaining large city in the world. Missiles designed to destroy the virus if things got out of hand, but I think we're way past that at this stage. I guess X-13 was also built to protect the rich and powerful so that they could live on. Isn't that indicative of today's society? Anyway, as we see in the plot for the story, Waltz manages to get the key from Aiden after attacking a group of peacekeepers. At an abandoned vehicle plant, he opens X-13, but activates the failsafe. Eventually, Aiden tracks Waltz down to X-13 and finds him carrying Mia. Aiden has found her, but in one shock twist, it's revealed that Mia isn't even Aiden's sister. She is, in fact, Waltz's daughter. So what exactly were the experiments that Waltz was conducting on children? Let's find out. In X-13, we can find reports for the children who Waltz was experimenting on. There are seven in total. These reports show that the children were given doses of something. These were inhibitors. Inhibitors are a mixture of antazin and THV, and when combined and injected, it sometimes killed the user. These inhibitors were used by the Night Runners to enhance their abilities, increasing their stamina. This is what Luan is referring to when she says she is not a Night Runner, but the only thing that she has in common with them is their history of substance abuse. Are you a Night Runner? Me? Night Runner? <laughs> I wish. They were really something, Aiden. Real heroes. The only thing I had in common with them was substance abuse. It's likely that many Night Runners suffered addiction to inhibitors. Anyway, the Night Runners are for a separate video, so let's get back on track. One of the children, Gabriel, exhibited vomiting, diarrhea, and fever after two doses of inhibitors. It was recommended that he is not tested on further. It's not known what happened to Gabriel after he was no longer needed. Some likely died whilst others were pushed to their limits. But one child in particular adapted well to the inhibitors, Aiden. Aiden was responding well, and in a way, he was lucky that before Waltz could inject him with even more inhibitors, the fire broke out and allowed the children to escape. Aiden, as he grew up, started to realize that he was different to other people, faster, stronger. He really didn't have much memory about being experimented on. He only really remembered Waltz and thought he had a sister in Mia. Aiden's symptoms started to intensify as soon as he started to abuse inhibitors, exacerbating his condition to the point where he eventually started to turn with more frequency and became unable to control his actions. Much like a viral which has just turned in that virals tend to cower and plead with you, then continue to attack you afterwards. What's alarming is that a lot of these children's names on their patient cards were listed as unknown. Now this goes back to a conversation with Vincenzo on a roof where he states that as a child, his friend Federico, amongst other kids, went missing suddenly. I've never found Federico. Who? Federico. He was my best friend. We were like brothers. We'd known each other forever. He disappeared like the other kids because of those fucking tests. One day, Federico vanished into thin air. We'd been playing football. I went to my house after that. He went home too and I never saw him again. I think we now know where these kids disappeared to. Test subjects in Walt's experimentation program. But why kids? Well, at one point in the game, we get some indication of why kids were used as experimental test subjects. Walt's believed that children possess a higher tolerance to THV and therefore could be administered more doses before they really got sick. Walt's reveals that he was genuinely looking for a cure. However, I doubt this. Waltz experimented on Mia as well, his own daughter. The only problem is that Mia was much, much weaker than all the other children, and she became ill with the virus. Waltz then spent years trying to keep Mia alive, hooked up to machines in an attempt to somehow cure her, but the truth is that he was only delaying the inevitable. 
She dies not long after Aiden rescues her from X-13. But that's basically it for the explanation of Walt, his past and his motives. If you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts, but for now take care and I will see you in the next one.